Good morning from the Legoland Windsor Resort. You're watching Adventure Planet, where today I'm back here for the first time in 2024 to check out the park, all those changes for the new season. But most importantly, today is the grand opening of Mini Figure Speedway. Yeah, these zero dueling coasters have been under construction for a while, and today is the official opening date for that. Cannot wait to get on both of the layouts here. I say hopefully, uh, <laughs> purely because there's a storm currently coming kind of resting around the kind of uh, western coast of the country, Storm Kathleen, and it has resulted in some pretty strong gusts today. Really hoping that that's not going to affect operations too much, but we'll see once we get into the park. Obviously, I'm going to be riding all of my favourites today. We're also going to take a look around the entire park, um, as well as covering at Minifigure Speedway itself. Now, if you want to come down to Legoland Windsor Resort, see all this for yourself. Prices start online from £35, and it's £8 to park your car here. Park hours today, 10 a.m. through until 6 p.m. I'm really excited for this one. Let's head on in. And here we are then through the entrance turnstiles into the beginning area of Legoland Windsor. Yeah, 12 themed areas at this resort. You've got the coffee shop just off to the left there. Oh, that sounds quite tasty, actually. <laughs> I feel like the drive down here this morning was uh, quite a long one, actually, even though it was only an hour. There was uh, some roadworks on the M4. And talking of roadworks, the infrastructure to the park is much, much better now. If you can remember the end of last season when we last visited for Legoland at Christmas, the parking infrastructure was in quite a state. That's all nicely sorted now in preparation for the new Woodland Village that opens in May. There he is, the mad scientist. Of course, Legoland Windsor built on the former Windsor Safari Park. Opened back in 1996. And you've got the UK's largest Lego store just off to the right here as well. And then down towards the end here, you've got those magnificent views. And it's a nice clear day today as well. I wish I had a decent zoom on this camera. Glorious views of Windsor Castle over the back there, Heathrow. Yeah, you get some great views from up here. And of course, yeah, like I say, we'll be checking out Minifigure Speedway located in the Bricktopia section of the park. You can just see it down there. Good to see Skyrides back open as well, the little Skyrider. Rumours at the end of last season that that was actually going to be removed, but yeah, look at these views. Absolutely fantastic, stretches all the way back, and on clear days today, it really does look great. Yeah, we won't be taking the vernacular down into the heart of the park today. We're going to be heading straight on over to Bricktopia and check out Minifigure Speedway. Let's go take a look. And of course, the advertising for Legoland Woodland Village is still here in the beginning area. <laughs> I love this sign. I think it looks great. Nice and colourful. Opening May 2024, on the 24th actually, and there's still some construction work going on on this um, out towards the front near the car parking, but it is start starting to take shape now. And uh, yeah, it's looking really interesting. I'm looking forward to staying here um, at some point in the future, probably this summer, somewhere around there. Looks really, really nice. Yeah, looks like we've got a new... Uh, <laughs> new purple and blue llama just off to the left here. Yeah, he's, uh, he's definitely new for 2024. The adventure is building. It's a something to do with Fortnite, I've got to be honest. I don't play a lot of Fortnite, but uh, yeah, there we are. <laughs> he looks great. And just opposite our friend the llama there, you've got the entrance to the hill train. little funicular that takes you down into the heart of the park. And yeah, it is handy if you do suffer from mobility issues of any kind, because Legoland Windsor is quite a hilly park. You've got the sweet stop off to the right there as well. And then if you're taking the funicular back up at the end of the day, when your legs probably are quite tired, you've got the exit to that just here. So yeah, it drops you off nicely back at the beginning and eliminates all the hills that are kind of down in this area here. Yeah, as we head on down to Bricktopia, let's see what the queue line's like for Minifigure Speedway. Yeah, really looking forward to this one. <laughs> and here he is. Do love the little party fox here. And just off to the left of him is, of course, Ferrari Build and Race with a uh, yeah, pretty small queue. Great place for the kids this, though. We go inside, build your own Ferrari and then race it at the end in a variety of different obstacle courses and they've got a great lego ferrari in there as well full size yeah you can kind of just see it through the main entrance there looks really really good as we head further into the bricktopia area still got lego studios 4d showing some different movies there and yeah like i say it's great to see skyrider back open there were rumors that this was going to get ripped up and removed it is quite a tired ride the track looks pretty bad, to be honest, but uh, yeah, nice to see the signage all nice and clean here as well, and a pretty big queue for that as well. Yeah, it just kind of takes you around this area, 
gives you some good views, especially now with minifigure speedway in place. That's going to offer some great photo opportunities from up the top of there. You got the big giraffes in place here as well. Looking good with their lipstick on. <laughs> and here we are, the star of the show today, minifigure speedway. We got a little bit of a stage down here as well, by the looks of it. Yeah, Skyrider's still looking good. Oh, what a great atmosphere. There we go, a little DJ. All right, let's check it out. <laughs> Shark boys here. <laughs> Oh, what an absolutely incredible atmosphere over at Minifigure Speedway. They got the stage there, Shark Boys there as well, all the music playing. Unfortunately, with it being copyrighted music, it kind of makes it a little bit difficult to film in that area. However, as you saw, two hour wait time currently for Minifigure Speedway. So consider I'm vlogging the entire park today. I'll come back to that a little bit later and grab a ride on both layouts. Gonna head into Miniland now and see if there's anything going on for Easter, because there is an Easter event here at, uh, at Legoland and usually they kind of hide some easter eggs around in miniland so let's go take a look and just starting off in the france area of miniland then i do love it here it's absolutely incredible yeah you could spend literally hours here just trying to spot everything in all the different areas all the games going on here vegetable show and splat the rat <laughs> Yeah, not seeing anything immediately that kind of jumps out for easter although there are these little hidden easter eggs just here literal easter eggs with the letters on here, which uh, is all part of that kind of Easter trail that you can do. And that Easter event goes on through until the 14th of April. Absolutely love Miniland. Over 40 million Lego bricks and 200 miles of underground cabling. It's a stat that I share every single vlog. It's just so impressive. <laughs> it looks great. And there we go, just outside the Thompson Arms, the milk float coming around. And another letter there, and a bit of an Easter egg hunt going on here. You got the Easter Bunny, all the eggs. <laughs> Love these little touches, it's great. And also here in Miniland, you've got the brick where you can head on into a nice air-conditioned building, certainly in the summer, and build lots of different models. And also during the Easter event, you can come here to collect your Easter pop badge. Yeah, there you go. Legoland Windsor Resort Easter. Oh, and I really do love Miniland here at Legoland Windsor. The Miniland areas of any Legoland park worldwide, they're kind of the heart of the park, really, an absolute staple. And they're so impressive. And there's some nice little touches in there as well with some Easter eggs, literally, uh, to find during that Easter event. Going to head over to the mini stage now. There's a couple of shows going on today. The Brick Factory, so some highlights of that coming up. And here we are at the Miniland stage then with showings of the Brick Factory at 11, 12, 1, 3 and 4 o'clock. Let's go take a look and see what this show's all about. So I can't pull it just to demonstrate? No! Just a tiny little bit? No! Tell you what, how about I brush my... No! Fine, fine, fine. Oh, seriously. Let's make bricks!
And it was just some highlights there then of the Brick Factory over at the mini stage. And yeah, that show has actually been here before, but it was nice to see that uh, Minifigure Speedway was actually kind of incorporated into the story. It's a good show, some catchy tunes on there, and they like to get all the kind of kids really involved with all those little squishy balls that I got absolutely pelted with halfway through. <laughs> Gonna head over to Duplo Valley now and see if we can get some better shots of Minifigure Speedway. And here we are in Duplo Valley then, where you will find one of the park's family coasters, the Duplo Dino Coaster, currently with a 45 minute wait. Yeah, it is busy in this area of the park today. But like I said in the intro, that is to be expected. Open in 2020, this one, manufactured by Art Engineering. Actually, Mac Rise was a subcontractor for that one back in the day with minifigure Speedway now looming over it as well. Yeah, it looks impressive that. We'll take a closer look at that a little bit later on. Duplo Playtown right in front of us here with the Duplo Airport off to the right. Yeah, looks like quite a long queue for that one as well, probably about half an hour or so. Drench Towers and Splash Safari just off to the left here. That's all getting pressure washed, ready for opening in the summer months. Great little area that in the summer gets very, very busy. But it's a great way to cool off. And you know what? I love Legoland when it's busy. There's such an atmosphere about this place. Obviously the play area just to the left, all with the soft flooring. And also here, more importantly, the ride that I make sure I get on every time I visit Legoland. It is, of course, Fairytale Brook. <laughs> Missed this at Christmas. Yeah, it's always closed during the winter months, but we'll get a ride on that now. Usually quite quick to get on this one because it's quite a good throughput. And you've also got the coffee cone just off to the left there as well. There's a little theatre just around here to the right as well where you can catch a show. But we're going to jump on this for now. Can't wait. And here we go then for our first ride on Fairytale Brook in 2024. Let's see if there's any changes. Wolf still drowning. <laughs> I'm curious to know if they've uh, actually changed the scary Snow White ride at the end. Can't wait to find out. Little pigs, a house of straw all blown down. <laughs> Here he is, the guy on his mobile phone. Love the clothes on the washing line just here. <laughs> Sleeping Viking. Oh, he's not uh, he's not performing the kiss anymore. Oh, he's got a little bit shy. That's interesting. <laughs> I always find this a little bit spooky when they point. <laughs> I absolutely love this ride. I think it's great. <laughs> Lovely, tasty looking cookie cottage. Nineteen ninety six, this ride opened, manufactured by WGH Transportation. <laughs> Seven Dwarves there, and there is Cinderella, and there's one version of Snow White just there. She's quite scary, but uh, the one at the end is worse. <laughs> oh, for many years she's been crying now, I do feel sorry for her. Oh, this wasn't here before. Looks quite lifelike as well. Yeah. The old pumpkin carriage there. Fairy Godmother. And of course, Cinderella looking all beautiful there. My shoes are made of glass. How magical. <laughs> it's such a great ride. This, this, this just kind of makes my day at Legoland Windsor when I come on here. 
Something I do every time. You just sit down, relax, see some great scenes. As we enter the Cave of Wonders. He's still struggling with it as well. Ah, oh, it's a magical cave, this. Nice little water feature to the right. Here we are, the three bears. Ah, oh, baby bears still crying. Chairs broken, porridge is eaten. And his bed's been taken as well. Absolute abuse. <laughs> Got a little red riding hood here as well. Love the silhouette of the wolf on there. <laughs> and there he is. Sat in the bed happily reading a fairy tales book and getting beaten by Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> it's a dark ride this. <laughs> And now we have the worst whistling in the world. Followed by the largest drop on a water ride ever. With the scary Snow White to see you off. <laughs> and here we go. Hey. Oh dear. Uh, she doesn't look that much better. <laughs> and here we are. Our 2024 ride on Fairy Tale Brook, one of many, I suspect. Great ride, that. And as mentioned earlier, you've also got the Duplo Valley Theatre here with current showings of Rapunzel at 11.30, 12.30, 1.30, 3.30 and 4.30. As you probably noticed back at the mini stage as well, it's good to see sign language being used on a couple of these shows just to make it a little bit more accessible for people, which is really, really good to see. Right opposite that, you've got the Duplo Express. Nice little uh, track ride for the kids, this. Yeah, nice and simple, but quite well themed in the middle here. You've got all the daffodils around as well, which looks really nice. And in terms of food here at Duplo Valley, you've got Farmer Joe's Chicken Company, if you fancy some chicken. But they also do for Easter these chicken waffles. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I'm not too sure if I would say that that was much of a combo. I don't know, maybe I'll try it a little bit later on. In terms of prices, though, obviously similar to other Merlin Parks, as we saw at Chessington the other day, $13.75 for the premium chicken tenders. 39.50 for the family meal and then you've got 12.50 and 13 for the different types of chicken sandwich there so yeah it is still quite expensive but not a bad place there's usually pretty good service and all the food is usually nice and hot and fresh and we've come out of Duplo Valley now then into Lego City where you've got the driving school oh there's carnage going on <laughs> I'll tell you what, I would have absolutely loved this as a kid. There is one for the smaller kids as well, the L drivers, which you'll find right opposite. And once you've done this course and you come off of the ride, you can actually head on over to this little kiosk here and pick up your driving license. Great little idea for the kids, this. And this is that smaller version for the kids, L drivers for between 0.9 and 1.1 meters. And there's carnage going on here as well. Watch where you're going, watch where you're going. And you also have the Fire Academy here in Lego City where you use the little pump handles in these vehicles to move your way down the track here and then you use the water cannons to put out the fires in this section at the end here and then you use the pump handles again to take the vehicles back to the starting point. You've also got the Bloom School here as well. Which is looking nice and fresh. I've got to say, this could do with a little bit of a clean, though. This bit of theming here, that's looking, <laughs> that's looking pretty grotty. But the ride itself is looking quite nice. Good little ride, this as well, offers some views over the area. And you've also got the other side of Fire Academy here as well. Yeah, it usually gets quite busy, this. But it is a ride to put you through, it's put you through your paces. It's not, a, uh, it's not a relaxing ride for sure, but it is a lot of fun. Fire Academy. 
And Lego Granny's still here baking her cakes with plain flour and cake icing. Looks quite nice, actually. Looks like a bowl of Cocoa Pops here. And you also have Coast Guard HQ here at Lego City with a current wait time of 45 minutes. Now, this is something that I haven't actually covered in the vlog before, and there's good reason for that, is that you're not actually allowed to ride this ride uh, as a single rider. There needs to be at least two to three people in the boat with a maximum of two adults. I have ridden it before with friends and family, and it is a great ride. So if you've not done it before, it really is worth doing. Offers some good views around the lake. However, do be aware that you can get wet. Yeah, it's a busy day here at Legoland today. 60 minutes for Laser Raiders. Ninjago, 60 minutes. You've got 70 minutes for Flight of the Skyline. 60 minutes for the Haunted House Monster Party. And that's even with Minifigure Speedway being the opening ride today. I thought that was going to take all the capacity, but it seems pretty spread around the park. Was expecting this, though, so it's not a surprise. Yeah, this could do with a little bit of clearing out, couldn't it? That's definitely seen better days. Looks like he might be doing just that, though. It looks like he's got a Dyson vacuum that he's caught a fish with there. <laughs> As Legoland Express goes off in the distance. Do love a good train ride. And that one's no exception. And Haunted House Monster Party is down to a 40 minute wait currently, so I might come back and do this one a little bit later. Opened in 2019 this one, and it is a Vacoma Madhouse featuring a pretty cool Bat Boogie pre-show section. <laughs> Facade of the ride is looking a lot better than it did at the end of last season. Yeah, looking nice and fresh, some repairs done here and there. Yeah, looking really, really sharp. And what's good as well is on the exit, you got Frankenstein just through here. Yeah, a little bit of a photo op for the kids. Hey, <laughs> that's his house after all. And what was more of a shock announcement from Legoland Windsor towards the end of last season was the closure of Deep Sea Adventure for the entirety of 2024. And yeah, as you can see, it's all closed up with this sign out the front saying that the ride is taking a break. It does say, we hope you enjoyed exploring the mysteries of the ocean depths. Stay tuned for more underwater adventures in the future. I suspect that this is gonna come back in a slightly different form to what it was. And by different form, I mean maybe perhaps the theming's all gonna be changed, perhaps a new storyline going in there as well. I don't think it's gonna come back in the same way as it was, which is interesting really, because this was not a ride here at the resort that in any way, shape or form, I thought, needed to be refurbished so uh, yeah it was a little bit of a shock announcement really but uh, yeah looking forward to seeing what this ride holds for next season 2025 as you can see it is all shuttered down here even the shop is closed up so yeah really not much to see here so if you're coming down to expect a ride on deep sea adventures you will be disappointed but looking forward to what this holds for 2025 and just crossing the bridge on the lake here and look at all the fish <laughs> yeah, they're certainly waiting for some food. They get fed a lot here at Legoland, so every time someone walks across and looks over, they all come over to say hello. Sorry, guys, I've not got anything on me, I'm afraid. But yeah, there he is. He's still trying to catch one of them over there. Yeah, nice setting this. The bridge over the lake, and of course, behind us, you've got the Legoland Hotel over the back there and the Legoland Castle Hotel here as well. Both really nice hotels, great accommodation, and a nice themed pirate swimming pool in this one as well, which is a great touch. And we've still got the dinosaurs here just to the right of the Legoland Hotel. This is certainly an area, though, that I really do wish was kind of maintained. Uh, it certainly could do with a lot of work, this area. It does look a little forgotten and certainly so close to the main hotel there. I do feel like it kind of detracts a little bit from it. I could feel like this could be made to look a lot nicer. It's a shame it has been uh, left forgotten for the past few seasons now, or for a long time, actually. And uh, although the models themselves are looking good, yeah, this is all looking... Uh, very kind of abandoned here. I do hope they do something with this in the future. We've got some nice minifigure speedway signage here, though. The race is on, located in Bricktopia as we approach the entrance to LEGO Mythica. But you know what? I think we'll head into LEGO Mythica through the magical forest. Yeah, why not? Here we go. A little area that a lot of people do miss. This was an extension to the LEGO Mythica area in May of 2022. And it's a nice little area which features little sections of AR and good fun things for the kids. And this fantastic teleportation tunnel. 
Hey. And there we are, welcome to the magical forest. The mystical realm where Lego creatures first came to life through the power of imagination. And it is a great area, this. Got some interactives here. Nice and immersive, nice and creative as well. And yeah, these little interactives here that you can press. Hey. There he is, Bits and Bobs himself. And like I say, there's little AR features around here as well. And you can get these little activation points just here. Explains how to do it. Download the app, scan the code, and you can bring Bits and Bobs to life in AR. Yeah, and there he is. <laughs> yeah, great little, uh, great little area, this. I gotta duck down for this. Yeah, it's a little bit tight through there. There's the carnivorous plant. Mr. Venus Flytrap himself. <laughs> yeah, this is all looking really nice, actually. Nice and fresh. Mr. Flower Horns. <laughs> yeah, you got the little bugs on here as well. It's definitely an area worth coming to see. And it's a shame, really, because uh, the entrance to it isn't all that clear, and a lot of people do miss this. Just that little entrance on the left as you approach the back entrance of Lego Mythica. Yeah, make sure you come in and have a look. The Caves of Illumination here as well, more interactives. Love this mist effect here as well. Yeah, it looks great. <laughs> and all of these little figures are actually featured in the Flight of the Skyline ride. So you can kind of familiarize yourself with them here first before you ride. Or if you come here afterwards, you'll already be familiarized with, with little guys like this. All the eggs in the tree and the spiders there. And then the screens in here are a nice touch as well with the dragon. Yeah, it all looks great. It does appear up the top there as well. <laughs> There he is. Yeah, it's certainly not a huge attraction, but it's definitely one not worth missing out on. As you exit the area here, and you're into the heart of Lego Mythica itself, with fire and ice freefall, little drop towers. And it's currently a 45 minute wait for the best ride here at Legoland Windsor Flight of the Skyline. Opened back in 2021, it's a flying theater ride and it is absolutely fantastic. And don't miss this little AR activation point here as well, where you can bring Maximus to life in AR. And a 45 minute advertised queue time waited just 40 minutes for my ride on Flight of the Skyline. Absolutely epic ride though. The UK's only flying theatre and it really is fantastic. The movement, the immersiveness, the smells, the audio, all really, really good. It's a ride that I never miss out on every time I come here to the resort, no matter what the queue time is. If you've not done it before, definitely get yourself on it. In my opinion, it's still the best ride here at the park. I do wish that more flying theatres would come to the UK. We're in desperate need of them. And uh, yeah, I really do love a good flying theatre and it's such a shame that this is the only one so far in the UK. Come on, we need more. Anyway, we're going to head out of Lego Mythica now and head towards the Kingdom of the Pharaohs. And some off-ride shots there then of both Hydra's Challenge and Fire and Ice Freefall, both manufactured by Zero as we enter the Kingdom of the Pharaohs. Love the audio in this area. Home to an interactive dark ride, laser raiders and three fairground attractions. And this guy. <laughs> Love him. And speaking of those three fairground attractions then, we have Thunderblazer just off to the left here, which is a little junior wave swinger. 
Oh, it's certainly busy in this area today. Wow, we have Aero Nomad right in front of us here, which is a big wheel. Yeah, nice to see the gondolas back on there again. Obviously, a lot of them were taken off during the Christmas event. <laughs> yeah, that's looking nice and fresh as well. And then just to the right of that, we have Desert Chase, which is the little junior carousel. And like I say, we also have the interactive dark ride Laser Raiders, which will hop on if maybe the queue time's less than 30 minutes. Let's go take a look. And I love this building for Laser Raiders. I think it looks awesome. It hasn't been touched up though between seasons. It could still do with a little bit of a paint job in some areas. Certainly down here, you've got some of the paints kind of flaking off here. And uh, another big change as well, not to the building itself, but right in front of it here. Is this area in the center? Yeah, we used to have our friend the camel here. That's completely been removed. I'm not quite sure why. And that's been completely uh, concreted over as well. So I don't think that's going to be returning. That's a little bit of a shame. I like my little friend the camel just there. <laughs> And of course, inside this building as well, you've got the Game Zone, which is powered by PS4, and Scarab Bouncers, the little frog hopper rise in here as well. Unfortunately, the queue time for Laser Raiders is 55 minutes, which is a little bit longer than what I'm willing to wait. So we're going to move out of this area and head on down to Hard Lake City. And we've made our way across into Hard Lake City now then. And yeah, look at this. The entire lake has been completely drained here. Yeah, all these platforms getting redone here. All the little walkways, yeah, there's certainly going to be no shows happening on here anytime soon. I'm not quite sure when this is going to be opening back up. But yeah, it's completely drained here, so no shows happening at the moment. It's interesting, really, because this lighthouse was actually refurbished last season. But it looks like they've taken the opportunity this season to completely drain the lake and uh, do the rest of it. Yeah, so I'm not quite sure when shows will return here, but there's certainly nothing happening here today. I'll tell you what though, Heart Lake City certainly smells fantastic today thanks to these strong gusts of wind really carrying the, uh, the smells from pizza and pasta across the whole area. It smells absolutely great. Pizza and pasta gone up in price again for the 2024 season. Adults now £21, kids £12. But I'll tell you what, I am quite hungry at the moment and the smell here today, <laughs> it's phenomenal. It smells great. We've got the International School Campus Shop just here as well. And of course, you can also pick up the Legoland Express from this area. And we've also got a Zamperla Disco as well with Mia's Riding Adventure that you can see just poking out through there. Recording studio. I like all this signage here. I think it looks great. Yeah, this area is looking really good for 2024. Nice and colorful and vibrant. It's definitely seen some pressure washing in this area. Of course, you've got the donut van there off to the left. And the Heart Lake face painting just through there as well. Heart Lake Donuts. Fantastic. And there's Mia's Riding Adventure, which according to the app, currently has a 20 minute wait time. And we're over in Lego Ninjago World now then, which is where you'll find Lego Ninjago the ride, currently with a 60 minute wait, manufactured by Triotech this one. And yeah, it's a good ride, but uh, it does seem to confuse quite a lot of people with those awkward hand movements. It's certainly one that you've got to get used to. But yeah, look at this, love this guy. <laughs> Still on his little whirlwind of flame there. Yeah, he looks great. He looks nice and fresh, actually. Definitely very clean. Here's the character meet and greets here as well. And you've also got a little rocking tug, Destiny's Bounty over the back there, which is up and in operation. And we've made our way into Pirate Shores now then, and this isn't very good to see, is it? Pirate Falls Treasure Quest currently out of action. I have been told it has been since the start of the season. I will re reiterate that I don't like to see that rides. All rides should be open at the start of a new season. And I'll tell you what, today, even though we've got those strong gusts of wind, it is feeling very mild. Temperatures of about 19 degrees C today. So yeah, this would have been a great ride to have open. Really would have soaked up a lot of the park capacity today, getting some of those busy crowds onto some of the water rides. And this is Ahsoka, this one as well. Certainly from all these effects around here, you can get really, really wet. But it is a great ride though, manufactured by Zamperla. And it is really well themed up in this building here, just before this final drop. Shame this one's closed. 
And also in Pyro Shores then you have the Enchanted Forest walkthrough section, which to be honest, outside of events, doesn't really offer too much to see. This is much better themed up for events like Halloween and Christmas, that kind of thing. So yeah, for today, not too much to see up in that area. You've also got the Jolly Rocker here right in front of us and Castaway Camp just off to the right, which is a nice large play area for the kids. Yeah, Jolly Rocker is still looking great. I do love this pirate ship. It's really well themed. Looks nice and clean for 2024. Big sail there still in place. And the audio offers a good ride that. Worth jumping on. Arr, avast your scurvy dog away from me booty and me treasure chest and me doubloons. <laughs> Well, that's all I could think of. That's my pirate talk for the day. But yeah, I love the little treasure chest here, right outside the pirate ship. And the little skull and crossbones as well. <laughs> and to finish off the rides here in Pirate shores you also have spinning spider and from what I've seen around various areas of the park it doesn't appear as though much has happened to Vikings River Splash however they have actually opened up this pathway again now this actually connects the beginning area with Pirate Shores so it's good to see this open again um, however they've put up all these construction walls now to completely kind of block off the area there are a couple of peepholes if you like that you can kind of see through but uh, from what I can see from both up here and at various points around the park nothing has actually happened here yet um, yeah I'm hoping now that minifigure speedway has gone into place that some progress will actually start happening here on this site I would love to see a Lego Ninjago coaster of some sort or maybe just a new Lego Ninjago themed rapids uh, it appears that all the trough and everything is still in place in here you can't really see too much through the construction walls you can see the queue line is still all in place there I don't think much has really happened behind there at all but hopefully we'll start seeing some progress soon however like I say it is good that this pathway is now back open and we've made it into the final area then of the Legoland Windsor Resort this is Knight's Kingdom home to two roller coasters and Merlin's Challenge the little flat ride just off to the left here yeah of course we got the Dragon's Apprentice and the Dragon see if we can get a ride on those as we go throughout the day love the theming in this area it really does look great with the big flags I'll tell you what it's getting really quite warm today temperatures now up to 20 degrees was not expecting this really nice and warm love all these models here all the geese and the pigs here love them A little bit of off-ride footage there then of Merlin's Challenge. I made my way over to the Dragon's Apprentice now. Opened in 1999, a year after the Dragon, manufactured by WGH Transport. Great little ride this. Hey, <laughs> two lap special, currently with a 30 minute queue time. Good to see the mist effects working. But that's nice and cool in this weather. And now just heading up into the castle of Knight's Kingdom. Yeah, good to see all this water again nice and clean as well. This much like Chessington at the Armada. This was all green as well. So it's good to see all that's nice and clean now. As we head on in to the castle to check out the queue time for the dragon then. It's definitely busy here. <laughs> People's like, don't know how to go to left or right. And I think I've got a kid that's just latching onto my leg who thinks I'm her dad. I'm not. <laughs> I can assure you I'm not. And there we are, the dragon currently on a one hour wait time. So I think what I'm going to do is grab myself some lunch now. And then we're going to head back over to the star of the show, Minifigure Speedway. Yeah. Thank you. 
And I've come back to Duplo Valley then, to Farmer Joe's Chicken Company for my lunch. It's so nice, I've decided to sit outside. A little bit gusty, but I can handle that. £13.75 for the chicken tenders meal, which comes with the Coke, the chicken tenders, the fries, and a nice heaping of uh, mayonnaise here. Yeah, £11 with my annual pass, so it is still quite expensive, but it's nice and fresh, nice and hot, and I am absolutely starving. Let's tuck in. And I'll tell you what, that was a delicious chicken tenders meal from Farmer Joe's Chicken Company. And I do still think that $13.75 is overpriced, but if you've got an annual pass, you can bring it down to £11. It's not too bad. Anyway, coming back towards the start of the show now, it's time for Mini Figure Speedway. Let's go and take a look. And here we are making our way back up to Legoland's two newest coasters and the fastest coasters now here at the resort at 35 miles an hour. And yeah, I love this near miss element here. <laughs> this looks great. The race is on with all the characters just off onto the left there. And of course, Roxy's there as well. The largest Lego figure in the world at 30 feet tall, weighing in at six tons, that thing. It is an absolute beast, like the little 24 on the leg as well just to symbolize the 2024 opening. Yeah, looking forward to getting on this. Like I say, it's a dueling shuttle coaster, two sides, Team All-Stars and Team Legends. And it looks great. I do have to say though, it is a little bit disappointing about this. I wish this was kind of finished off much better. And yeah, look at the state of this all down here. I hope all this is a work in progress. It doesn't look the best landscaping wise. However, this theming all looks really, really good. So uh, yeah, I'm hoping that kind of all of this around here is uh, worked on over the coming months as it does take away from it a little bit but this character though absolutely huge <laughs> look at the size of her and yeah you can kind of appreciate it a little bit better from this angle you have got some landscaping that's gone on here there's some trees and bushes that have been planted and the station itself looks great it's absolutely huge really looking vibrant you've got the banners across here the minifigure speedway signage which all looks really nice but then obviously just to the right of that yeah you've got all this kind of bare land here which really doesn't look the best and like i say this i really do wish that had been finished off better i hope that that is going to be coming over the next kind of weeks and months just to make that look a little bit better but uh, other than that, yeah, all this looks great. Really do like that. Really does set it off. Looking forward to getting on this. And I'll give you my thoughts as soon as I come off. And here he is, love hot dog man for minifigure speedway. <laughs> He's looking right cheerful. And what kind of racer are you? Follow the flow diagram. And you'll find out just which of these characters you are. <laughs> I like this. Good way to keep you entertained in the queue line. Love all the signage, really colorful, vibrant, great stuff. Team legends or team all stars? Who should we go for? Still in the queue line, checking out all the characters and the story, but look, this is interesting, isn't it? Well, they forget to take this off, the protective layer. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I would have thought that uh, someone would have said, oh, hold on a second, we haven't taken this off yet. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. And here we are in the batching section of the ride now then. We are about to join Team All-Stars. Hey, popcorn costume kid. <laughs> hey. Okay teams, you now have your captain. Are you ready to go head to head at the mini figure speedway? This is going to be an awesome race. And here we go. Hey. Oh, it's great to see something like this at the Legoland Windsor Resort. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, love all this vibrant colouring around here. It's like I'm about to board a space shuttle. <laughs> oh yeah, this is great. Here we go. Row number 10. Right on the back. Yeah, love the station. Looks great. As per usual for Merlin Parks, we can't film on ride, but I'll give you my thoughts when I come off. And we'll also get a ride on Team Legends as well. Please remain seated. 
And there we go then, I've just had my first ride on Legoland Windsor's minifigure speedway. Thanks for racing, there we are. And we won as well as Team All-Stars. We're gonna queue up now and get our ride on Team Legends. And then I'll give you my thoughts after that. This is a bit of a shame though, the photo pit stop out of action. I'm assuming there was just a couple of delays here and uh, that hasn't opened up quite yet, but I imagine that'll be open within the next few days or weeks. Yeah, looks good though. All this theming around the edges here. Yeah, it looks really, really good. Yeah, time to rejoin the queue and get on the blue track. And here we go up the left side this time then to join Team Legends. Let's see if we can get another win under our belt here. And here we go. Back into the batching area. And so you can really appreciate from here just how close the coaster gets to that original building. Yeah, this building here is the only original one left back when this was Windsor Safari Park. And it's nice to see it all cleaned up nice and white there as well and yeah you really do get quite close you can get a good view of it as you're coming up for your reverse section throughout the ride coming up the lift hill this way yeah really nice to see that a bit of love has gone into that building <laughs> all these flags and here we are going down the bloom section then to team legends yeah look at this yeah, this whole building is just kind of back of house, a lot of the staff work in there, but it's great to have some good views of it finally. Now all that landscaping has been done, and here we go. Row 9 this time, so towards the back again. It offers some great views on the back row though. Here we go, Row 9. You can also get your minifigure speedway merchandise from the little stall just to the right of the queue line here. Here's your price list. Feel free to pause that at any point during the video just to check out those price lists. Yeah, the merch isn't too bad actually. You've got a nice kind of white polo shirt type style over the back there with the minifigure speedway logo on it. You got some kids wearables here as well. And you've also got banana guy and hot dog man just there as well, which is absolutely awesome. Yeah, love that. And I've just had my ride then on Minifigure Speedway Team Legends. And unfortunately, we lost that one, which kind of means I feel like I need a third ride just to get that decider, you know. But the ride itself, yeah, let's start with the queue line. Uh, yeah, really nice, actually. Lots of audio playing in there, which is really good. It's nice and colorful and vibrant. There's some trivia throughout the queue line as well. And like an introduction to the characters as well, which is nice. And some good photo opportunities as well with the characters, which is really, really good. I feel though, even though we know this project was delayed by a week, there are still some bits that do need finishing off, like you saw with the plastic layers that have been kind of pulled off by uh, people queuing, um, really should have been taken off before the ride was opening. I'm not sure how that's been forgotten, um, but yeah, those plastic sheets have not been taken off. Um, and just other little areas as well that could have, done, could have been done with a little bit more tidying up. Otherwise, queue line area is really, really good. There was a little bit of carnage this morning because it's opening day. The entrance to the ride is actually 
Ferrari just past Ferrari build and race on the left side there uh, but today it was kind of almost all the way back into Duplo Valley going all the way back around so that's to be expected on an opening day for a new ride that will uh, become much better over the days and weeks you're then led into the batching area where you get to choose between team all-stars and team legends there's a little bit of a pre-show where you're introduced to your team captain before you finally make your way into the station itself and the station I gotta say it's fantastic yeah it's really nice and spacious nice and colorful the audio in there is great the ops cabin looks fantastic where it situated you go up to the air gates 10 rows you're given a number beforehand before you actually go in and you take your place by those air gates ready to get onto the ride itself and the ride itself it's great Legoland has been crying out for a new coaster for the longest time and to have two of them is fantastic and I do love a zero force coaster and these are brilliant the dueling coasters is a custom layout the trains look fantastic you start by going reverse incline up that lift hill and I have to say the first things that kind of really jump out at you at that point especially on the back row are the views across the park absolutely phenomenal you can see right across you can see Heathrow really really amazing views and on a day like today oh yeah absolutely epic you'll then let go you come down through the station and depending on which side you're on you hit that left or right bank there's some great interaction between the trains the nice near miss element is great as well another couple of whippy elements and then you're back into the lift hill to do the whole thing again in reverse it's about 30 seconds each way so you're looking about a minute or so um, in terms of entire ride length but yeah I think it's absolutely fantastic it's smooth but at the same time whippy and yeah like I say the interaction is great everyone was having an absolutely awesome time <laughs> especially on the team legends run everyone was going absolutely crazy it was so good to see and uh, yeah the interaction with the actual original uh, mansion as well is great when you're coming up just before you do uh, the reverse layout it's great you can see the mansion it's so nice to be actually be able to see that now now that all that landscape has been done landscaping has been done but I gotta say speaking of landscaping that's just the only drawback at the moment is the state of the ride itself uh, in certain areas they have made some attempts they've got some trees planted some bushes but the majority of the ride in terms of landscaping really isn't looking the best um, and I do wish that that near miss element had been finished off better um, I can only hope that that does actually happen in the coming days and weeks that they do look at that and some of those queue line areas as well I'm sure they'll get fixed up but like I say overall it's an absolutely fantastic addition to Legoland Windsor I'm so happy that they finally got this open two new coasters two new creds oh absolutely brilliant i'm gonna go and get my third ride and who's this <laughs> you know the popcorn and soda and sweets up there look at those hot dogs looks glorious i absolutely love these guys here look at the blooms <laughs> it looks great anyway just had my third ride on minifigure speedway team all stars again this time and unfortunately i lost which means i'm now two one down definitely gonna have to rectify that when i next visit Legoland at Windsor. Here's the guys up here on the Skyrider, which is what I'm going to head on to now. There's just 50 minutes left of park opening, so we're going to head on to here. 35 minute queue time. Yeah, we'll see what kind of views we can get from the Skyrider. Glad this ride's still here. Like I say, there was rumours towards the end of last season that it was going to be removed, but uh, yeah, apparently that's not the case. Let's jump on. And here we go on the Skyrider then. Final ride of today. Advertised queue time, 35 minutes, waited just 20, so not too bad. And yeah, this gives some nice views over the area, worth doing. It can get busy though, depending on when you come here. Worth doing kind of halfway through the day, not towards the beginning or the end of the day. As due to its location, it can get quite busy. Got the Learning Academy just off to the right there. We should get some fairly decent views of minifigure speedway from here and yeah as you can see this is the main entrance to the ride here but yeah this morning it was basically going all the way down this path and down here back towards duplo valley and yeah the interesting thing is is this particular area of legoland windsor used to be the most tired but since Ferrari build and race, and certainly now with minifigure speedway, it has certainly brought some life back to the area. I do think it still looks a little bit tired, the 4D cinema especially, and this ride in particular as well. Certainly could do with some work, but it is certainly looking a lot better up here now. 
Yeah, minifigure speedway looks great. They took taken some of these trees down as well. That would have opened the area up nicely. But yeah, I just really hope they do improve the landscaping around that ride. I'm sure they will. As we know, there were those project delays. And maybe that's just some of the work that they do plan to carry out. Some absolutely fantastic views of Miniland here, though, from the Skyrider. It's been an absolutely beautiful day today. We have had some strong gusts, but it's been really warm. It's been glorious. First proper sign of spring today. Beautiful day. Always enjoy my day out here at Legoland Windsor. And it has been quite busy today. We've seen some pretty long queue times, but that's what kind of makes it, you know, it really gives you that atmosphere. Yeah, we saw the show at the mini stage over the back there earlier today. And you've got Ben and Jerry's off to the right here as well. If you fancy some ice cream. And then this is the back of Ferrari Build and Race. Yeah, as you can see, kind of the canopies there for the 4D cinema. Yeah, they're, they're not looking the best. <laughs> they, do, uh, they do detract from the area somewhat. Yeah, I would like to see this area still get a little bit of a cleanup. But like I say, Ferrari Build and Race and Minifigure Speedway has certainly brought some vibrancy back to the area, which is good to see. And there we are, little ride on the Skyrider. And that's going to be it from Legoland Windsor, so we'll be closing up the vlog shortly. And back in the beginning area of the park now then, in the Lego store. Thought I'd pop in and have a look at some of the Lego Ninjago models. They've got some new pieces in here for 2024. All on Ninjago Dragons Rising here. Yeah, some nice models. And down here as well, 105 pounds though. Not cheap, but they are pretty cool. Absolutely love these mugs. 25 pounds for them. But yeah, look at that. <laughs> love the skeleton mug, that's great. This Dungeons and Dragons model is fantastic. Dungeons and Dragons Red Dragon's Tail, 315 pounds though. <laughs> Pretty steep. And with that whistle stop tour in the Lego store back in the beginning area of the park then, that is where I'm going to bring my vlog here at the Legoland Windsor Resort to a close. And you know what? It's been a busy day today. However, it's been absolutely epic as well. It creates such a great vibe and atmosphere in this park when it's busy. And you have to expect that. It's the Easter holidays. Legoland is a busy park anyway. So it was expected. But you know what? It's been great. The weather's held off for us. It's been nice and warm. And those strong gusts that we had uh, didn't do anything to interrupt ride uh, operations which is kind of what I was worried about um, this morning it's been great to get back here for the first time in 2024 great to see the park again um, get on some of my favorite rides even with those long queue times like flight of the skyline the Easter trail was really fun as well lots of little Easter eggs to spot around the park which is fun if you bring the kids here and want to get involved in all of that and of course all the themed areas all 12 themed areas looking really really sharp for 2024 yes it's a shame about deep sea adventure I hope that comes back in a nice new form back in 2025. It's a shame to lose that for this season. Um, but, you know, that is what it is. Um, looking forward to that reopening next season. Looking forward to the Woodland Village, of course, which opens on the 24th of May. That should be good. Should offer a nice little stay over uh, for the park in addition to the hotels that are already here. But, of course, the star of the show today was Minifigure Speedway. What an absolutely brilliant addition to this park. And this morning, the atmosphere in the Bricktopia area 
area was just absolutely electric. You had the stage area there, the DJ, Shark Guy was there, there were photo opportunities everywhere, and everyone was really, really happy and excited to get on these new dueling coasters. And I think they're brilliant. Like I said uh, in the review earlier in this vlog, I think they're absolutely spectacular. They offer some great views across the park, and being a height restriction of only 1.05, really, really accessible to everybody, which is great. I can't wait to come back to the Legoland Windsor Resort at some point in the near future to ride them again. Absolutely superb. In terms of the next vlog coming up though right here on Adventure Planet, we're going to be back at Drayton Manor and yeah, there's quite a few changes to check out in that park, including a brand new themed area, Frontier Falls. We've got the construction update on the new coaster and of course we're going to take a look at the former Shockwave, now known as The Wave, with their new sit-down trains. So we'll have a look at that as well as exploring all the rest of the park for the new 2024 season. That's coming up right here on Adventure Planet, but from Legoland Windsor, I want to thank you so much for watching, and as always, happy riding everybody. I will see you at Drayton Manor. <laughs>